Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Q4 FY24 earnings conference call of the Federal Bank Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you please, uh, should you need any assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Sovik Roy, Head Investor Relations, the Federal Bank Limited. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you, Sadhguru. Uh, good evening to all of you and welcome to our earnings call to discuss the results for the quarter that went by. I'm sure you all had a chance to go through the results deck, uh, reviewed them well, and also heard our post result press con in which our MD has probably answered a lot of questions already. Uh, we have had a strong year of performance and we have delivered on most of our aspirational return ratios with the right consistency on earnings while maintaining a very good balance sheet as well. Uh, during the year, we also maintained uh, the right growth trajectory, if you have seen uh, in our deck, of course, across all our focused business segments. Uh, we scaled up the branch network as we crossed a milestone of 1,500 branches, and that's almost a 10% increase in our network. We exited the Year with an all-time high annual profit, our total business crossed 4.6 lakh crore and our balance sheet also crossed the milestone figure of 3 lakh crore. Uh, the last quarter in particular, as um, MD already mentioned during the press con, was operationally one of our strongest ever. Some of the numbers, as mentioned in the deck, we did give a call out there, had slight wrinkles due to a one-off impact on account of certain wage-related matters. I'm sure most of you have noticed that and you know, made the right calculations already. Our margins did expand marginally, but it did, and our asset quality continues to remain pristine. Uh, with this, I'll hand over the call to our MD, Mr. Sham Srinivasan, who is also joined by the entire senior team. Uh, thank you. Thanks again for joining, and over to you, sir. Thanks, uh, Shavik. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I think Shavik mentioned the uh, high point of the financial outcome. I'll just draw our attention or take us back to March 23 when we had our uh, investor analyst day and spoke about our outlook and our aspirations for the. Yeah, yeah I can add you, sir. I can add you. Over the two, three year period. And one of them was to ensure, uh, if you all recall, or many of you may recall, we talked about uh, the three ends that are non negotiable. One is around NPS improvement, second is NPA being best in class, and the third is accretion in net worth. And those are obviously driven outcomes, but driven by a meaningful improvement in our return ratios. So I'm happy that uh, in FY24, along those lines, we did deliver. While Q4 reported net profit is 906, it did have the one-off impact of the pension, attack, pension effect of about 160 odd crores. So barring that, I think the quarter was uh, quite a long predicted line. Growth has been consistently good. Uh, expansion in the margin is beginning to trickle through, uh, even though the cost of deposit seems uh, remains elevated. Uh, that's because of the pivot in business. But as a, as a scale we operate, it takes a while for margin expansion to happen uh, while the cost of deposits remains high. But the trajectory, the turn has happened, and we believe that going into FI25, that should sustain. Uh, operationally, a strong quarter, like uh, Shavik pointed out, but I just want to call out the uh, remarkable consistency and quality of credit is something that we are uh, very proud of. Uh, and Q4 was particularly, uh, you know, exaggeratedly good. I've said this in three, four earlier calls, so it looks like it's a repeat, but uh, in Q4 in particular, our slippages were lower than the recovery and upgrade, and the recovery and upgrade didn't have any one of chunky cases that came through. It's more the structural, granular, regular uh, accounts that uh, sort of recovered or upgraded. Uh, so on balance, the year that went by was strong. Our outlook going into FY25 uh, remains quite confident. Uh, we are entering 25 with uh, some industry level, ta you know, tailwind and headwind. I would say tailwind in terms of credit growth looks quite promising. Uh, there's demand that is consistently good across business model, across business segments. Deposits are growing, but deposit, the, the quality of deposit or the cost of the deposit uh, structure is something that we have to deal with. Uh, in particular for us, 
uh, thankfully our uh, footprint expansion across the country has played out well. You may have noticed our rate of growth of our CASA uh, in the geographies that were not traditionally our stronghold is now, uh, you know, in the mid to high uh, double digits, uh, sorry, t uh, high teens, and that's uh, something that we are confident of keep uh, keep you know sort of that trajectory up while we deal with some structural changes that have happened and how the non-resident uh, flows come in. Flows are coming in, but it comes in in the form of uh, term more than uh, savings. So I think we enter FY25 uh, quite mindful of the business model that we're pursuing, the commitments we've made in terms of cap, uh, uh, our uh, return ratios. ROA expansion was guided for about four to five basis point increments uh, every sequentially every year. I think for the seventh year on trot, ROA expansion has moved up. Uh, we are now uh, correcting for the one-off. Uh, would have been a strong quarter, but full year was 1.32 in ROA. Three years here is about 1.28. I see that expansion continuing into FY25 and beyond. So with those sort of opening words, uh, as usual, we have the entire senior team. who will be happy to take calls, uh, take questions, and uh, give insights wherever you guys want to. So I'm opening uh, opening this up. Uh, operator, you can open it up for questions. Thank you. <laughs> we will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone phone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets only while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Okay, I think we can start. We already have you in the queue. The first question is from the line of uh, Maruk. Atajanya from Nuwama, please go ahead. Yeah, hello, sir. Uh, good evening. So my, I have three questions. So the first question is on your recovery upgrades, which are almost at an all-time high for you. So congratulations for that. But uh, would there be an impact of these recovery and upgrades on the NII? Because a lot of CSU banks take some amount of recovery income through the NII. So was there uh, any interest, recovery interest income in the NII? And then if there was, what was it last quarter or some comparison like that? That's my first question. Yeah, go ahead. Complete the questions. I'm sure between yeah. Venkat and others will take care. Sure. Then the second question is on fees. So um, if you see on an annual basis, your fee growth, other than investment profit, is strong. You know, at a, just, just a little under 30%, other than investment uh, gains. But uh, the problem is that uh, just like in the fourth quarter, there's been some softness. So in, uh, while the card fees have been strong, parabanking has been softer, and, you know, there's a lot of movement across segments. So any longer term guidance we can get on fee income and what drove the YOY growth and the QOQ growth in the fourth quarter to look a little softer than earlier quarters, if there's any seasonality or any reason, and how what growth do we build in, in the next year or so? Does it be 25% up or what? Uh, and then uh, so the third is on OPEX. So if you exclude the employee provision from your annual OPEX, right, of 1.62 billion, you still have a growth of around 25%, a little higher than 25% year on year. So is that, uh, is, will that run rate continue or how does it moderate from year on, on an annual basis? These were my questions, sir. Okay. All useful and good. Uh, on the fee income, I think uh, it's uh, no. It's, I don't believe you can sort of sequentially plot it and say this will grow. But a y on y basis, anything between 20 25 percent is uh, very much on the cards, and we believe FY25 will also see that kind of momentum. Uh, Q4, you did see pick up in card fee going up, loan processing fee going up uh, materially. Uh, but you know some of the lines like para banking was slightly lower, but that's only a, a you know sort of modest change versus the sequentially previous quarters. It is much higher. Q3 was a little higher than Q4, 
otherwise it's been on trajectory you know around 50 to 55 or 60 crores so you could uh, we believe the core fee income growth uh, roughly about 20 25 percent is something that minimally what we will do we will seek to do it even higher uh, without any one off the one off should hopefully be positive and kick it up higher so that's on the fee income uh, on the first question on recovery upgrades yes when recovery is an upgrade happen certain uh, a degree of interest uh, interest income benefit also comes through because the uri benefit also comes through and on the third question was on um, sorry remind me the third Op question opex uh, group yeah yeah go ahead Venkar. maybe you can take it yeah so thanks uh, sham uh, maruk uh, on the opex growth if you exclude the staff cost uh, one time impact the growth levels would probably be around the same uh, considering the fact that we'll continue to invest in new branches, our investment in technology will continue at pace, and uh, there'll be a small uptake in the staff cost with all these recent changes also, which will come through next year. So a combination of all this will see the OPEX around the same levels. But what is important to note is that uh, the branches which we are investing, you know, you'll notice that the payback is now getting faster. It's uh, approximately 18 months. Of the 75 branches we opened in last year, FY23, almost 55% of them, about 40 plus branches have already are now profitable. So it's encouraging to see that the pace at which we are able to make the branches productive is faster. But having said that, we will continue to be investing in these areas as we believe that this will be the drivers for the strategic levers which we have outlined in terms of NII growth, CASA, and distribution. Thank you, sir. That was very helpful. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rikin Shah from IIFL. Please go ahead. Um, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, I have a few questions. Uh, so the first one is on the uh, restriction placed on the uh, co-branded credit card. Uh, may I check what are the corrective actions which are underway and uh, how soon do you expect that to resolve? So that's question number one. Uh, question number two, an extension of the first one, uh, if you could help us think through the financial impact of the same, right? Uh, while the proportion of that credit card book is less than 2% of the total loan, uh, the card fee income has been growing at a very strong rate of 50% YOI, and even the digital personal loan, which we believe is the cross-sell to those customers, has been growing north of 50%. So how do you think about that uh, going ahead? Uh, the third question is on the yield. Uh, so uh, if we look at uh, the increase in the yield since the rate hike cycle started, uh, the yields have gone up around 150 basis points in total for you, which is the least among uh, uh, most of the banks. And uh, this is despite we having the highest share of floating rate loans. So uh, is there any pressure points in some of the segments that we operate in or uh, are we pushing on growth at the expense of profitability? Uh, that's the third one. And the fourth one is on the asset quality. Uh, if you look at the provisioning part, uh, there was expected to be for, uh, AIF related provision in 4Q. Has that come through in fourth quarter? And uh, in uh, the presentation, you have mentioned there is some reversal of provision even on other purpose loans. So if you could elaborate, what is that? Those are my questions. Thank you. Okay. Shall you want to go on Cobra? Sure, Sam. Thanks. Um, on the co-brand credit card, as you rightly indicated, we have paused the uh, co-brand credit card. We are in the process of working through the details of what RBI has requested us to look at. Uh, and, um, you know, we work through most of the details that need to be done. In the next few days, we will be going back to RBI and presenting our plan, um, indicating where the corrections have been made. If all goes well, um, RBI should be able to allow us to resume. I can't give you dates and timelines as to when RBI can come back because that's really dependent on RBI's review thereof. In terms of financial implications, um, uh, you know, as you uh, indicated, its contribution from an overall asset perspective card is really small in its overall perspective, and there are other products that are able to um, kind of lift the, uh, the potential slack that will come from non-availability non of credit cards or the co brand cards. In the fee income side also, as Sean uh, uh, referred to when he was, ref when he was answering the question to Malu, uh, we do expect that the fee, overall fee income will continue to uh, keep up the pace of growth we've seen so far. 
um, cards will definitely be earning, you know, whatever we don't get on credit cards will get compensated by um, other products. On personal loans, we refer to that also. Our personal loans are uh, not necessarily tied into our credit cards. Uh, the personal loans book that we have built has two kind of fundamental pillars. One is um, cross sell to our existing savings bank customers who've been with us and, um, you know, who we can assess through various means from a credit um, perspective. That's, what, that's one part of the book. The other part of the book is new to bank customers who are coming in for a personal loan, uh, so through our digital lending partners. The summary of um, kind of AMD put together is we don't expect too, many, uh, too much of an implication either on the balance sheet or on the, on the fee income. Uh, we will be going back to RBI and if all goes well, I'm sure we will uh, bless our resumption very shortly. Uh, thank you. Um, a couple of clarifications, please. Uh, when you say that uh, the corrective actions are underway, uh, would the partnership with OneCard continue or uh, this is something uh, wherein you can do oh, this and fix it? Uh, so for us, uh, you know, all our partners are critical and, uh, you know, we've been, we've, uh, as much as the partners invested in it, we have also invested in it. We, uh, we will be going back to RBI with corrective actions on the partnership. So we do expect that, um, you know, with the corrections we have taken, RBI should be uh, able to. It's really, uh, a con uh, you know, discussion that we will have with RBI when we are ready. Just to add, uh, I think the question was, will partnerships continue? I don't believe either the regulator wants us to stop partnerships and or we are in, we are looking at that direction. Uh, certainly when we started out our fintech partners and where we are now, a lot of evolution has happened. We have learned, they have learned, regulations have changed. Now we are continuously readjusting to it. But the fundamental objective of expanding reach and digitally using partners has not evaporated. The scale size Quantum will vary based on how much uh, filters and how much guardrails are there. But structurally, we are not saying we are going to shut out of partners. Unless there is a regulatory requirement to do so, hopefully that won't happen. Sorry, sir. So, one card should be able to share the customer, uh, transfer the customer data back to federal bank and give away that data access. Yeah, unfortunately, what uh, gets reported, written about is all uh, conjecture. Uh, it's never the full fact, right? Uh, it's not like we were lax about letting somebody else take our data and so on and so forth. But there were some additional firewalling that had to be done, additional controls that have to be put in place, and those are effectively happening. Got it, sir. And uh, Shalini, if you could just uh, uh, give a number as to what kind of cross-selling do we do to the credit card customers for personal loans, that number would be helpful as well. So, like I said, both of it, uh, you know, are both our credit card proposition and our personal loan proposition are currently cross-sold to, uh, to our savings bank customers. We honestly don't do much of a cross-sell between the two. I don't have the number readily available, but it's not a very large number. Our cross-sell is primarily to our savings bank customers. Got it. Okay. Thanks for the first two questions. Uh, the remaining two. Yeah, just uh, we've gone longer into your reminders. The question three and four of yours. The so question number three was on yields. I think, uh, Shams. Correct, correct, uh, the increase in yields of um, you know between the repo price hike and right. Uh, that was the question number three on yields. Yeah. Yeah. I think I'll take that. Uh, uh, on yields, the expansion, like you pointed out, is more modest than it has been for some other banks, which it may be. I think we have to understand that our structure of how we do business is uh, we don't trade risk for growth. I've said this for 14 years and I'll say it for the remaining five months. Uh, we are very clear that we will do business from segments that we can manage well and our credit costs have held admirably because of that. So to that extent, ability to go and demand command extremely high, uh, you know, sort of readjusting to prices is not that easy. Within that framework, our expansion has been quite considerate, consider considerable, keeping the risk profile in mind. So as we pivot more into the newer higher yield businesses, which we are, you are seeing through these last four quarters, uh, once the businesses like credit card, microfinance, personal loans, commercial vehicles are kicking in better, we are seeing the yield uptick in the blended margin increase. And I believe as we go into FY25, that will get a little more pronounced. So we have to deal with a rising cost of deposit situation, which thankfully I think is moderating at this point in time. As we do that, our business pivoting 
into the higher e higher yield businesses combined with our repricing wherever possible without compromising on risk will see pick up but yes i agree the yield pick up that you may have wanted us to see may not be fully playing through but our overall roi and roe commitments are factoring in for all of that that's why the blended rate of growth we are committing for and we think we are honoring that delivering it and hopefully uh, deliver even higher in the quarter ahead got it sir and then the last question on provisioning ai and There was no AI provisioning in Q3 nor in Q4. Okay, and uh, the reversal for other purpose that we saw in the PNL. Yeah, the other uh, provisioning of 67 crore reversal that you saw was uh, uh, you. We have taken an extra provision in Q3, which now has been reversed out, and that has hit our income line because there were some excess fee charges that had to be reversed. that were not crystallized so we took the hit in q3 on provision line so the profit was uh, correct and that has since been corrected in q4 so you will see a reversal in interest in uh, provision line but corresponding hit on the inter in a uh, fee income also got it sir thank you for patiently answering all the questions thank you our next question is from the line of nitin agarwal from motilal oswal please go ahead yeah hi uh, am i audible Yes. Uh, th thanks sir, for the opportunity and uh, congrats on the good results, sir. Uh, so, a couple of questions. Uh, first is like on on the recoveries taking forward. Like, what has really driven this uh, strong uh, recoveries and upgrades this quarter? Is there any one off in this number? And then I said it up front. Uh, there were no one off, no chunky gains. Charge if you are on the call, you can come back. But none of them uh, anything. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, sir. So there are no chunky calls. This has been completely granular, and uh, uh, all the regular uh, recoveries in a day. Okay. And uh, second, sir, is on the succession planning. Like, if you can talk about where are we on that, and uh, by when do we plan to submit the names to the RBI? Uh, any any progress? If you can comment around that. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Yeah, the board is, uh, you know, set up the search panel. The search panel has been doing a great job. They have uh, gathered a good slate of candidates from outside, inside. They are processing through it. I do believe uh, in the next week, fortnight, two weeks, three weeks, they will be able in a position to share with RBI. And once it goes into RBI, you know, the process works, and they'll do the due diligence. So it'll take its own between three and four months for uh, clarity. who the candidate is but at this point in time it's going well so we are quite encouraged by all the developments okay and so the other question is on the branches uh, we have been opening branches at a healthy rate and this quarter uh, uh, like we have opened at a very accelerated pace so how are we looking at uh, in, in fy25 the pace of branch expansion and uh, related to it how do you see the cost income ratios moving from here <laughs> but four years back just coming out of covid we had said uh, and three years back we would like our expansion to be between 5 and 7% increase in network every year uh, this year was closer to 10 because we saw some opportunities and we were willing to put in that extra uh, energy to get that going so we uh, we think fy25 we will do certainly between 5 and 7% if pnl can accommodate we will do a little more um but the consequence of that like venkat said that uh, break even is turning to be faster and if that stays because those are businesses that are micro uh, micro finance uh, uh gold loans and uh, deposits then maybe the business case for expanding it will be higher but i would think in fy25 about 100 branches minimally more than that depends on uh, what kind of pnl space we have sure And so, lastly, one observation uh, on the business concentration. If I look, the deposit concentration has been inching up like over the last two, three years, and uh, it, it has like uh, almost say doubled in the last two years. So, uh, generally, as the banks gain size, this is either in in in, in control or it it improves. So, why is it so, and uh, how do you really see that internally? Sorry, I didn't get the question. To be honest. So, sorry this is in uh, respect to the deposit and the advances concentration one of the slide in the presentation uh -huh. the, the uh, top 20 depositors concentration has been like on a rise and if you see like the trend over the last two years this number is going up significantly 
So how do you really read that while there is no harm as such? There's, the numbers still pretty much in control, but how do you read this trend internally and any any level that you will want to watch out over here? Uh, nothing to comment on, Nitin. There's nothing, at least in our uh, dashboard, nothing shows sure anything that is uh, alarming or change in direction. Uh, if we are going at term deposits, which is the trend of the market, then there will be some kind of concentration, but largely customers who are consistent. But apart from that, honestly, there's nothing to add as a insight here. Uh, we still would like to be granular, but retail in nature. Sure, sir. Thank you so much and wish you all the best. Thank you, Tim. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Param Subramanian from Nomura. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, good evening and thanks for taking my question. Uh, first question is on provisioning. Uh, so we've uh, this year the standard asset line, standard asset provisioning line has seen 200 crore of write back. And I'm assuming it's coming from the restructured uh, asset uh, provisioning reversal. So just try to um, you know get a sense on uh, you know what is the PCR we have on the restructured assets and we are seeing 200 crore of reduction in this restructured portfolio every quarter. Is that something that will continue uh, you know going over the coming year? That's my first question. Yeah. Outlook for FY25 looks consistent to 24. So and Sham, what is the provision cover we have on the uh, restructured portfolio and has it changed through the year? Raj or Venkat? Yeah, we are maintaining the uh, regulatory minimum provision uh, firm. So we, we are well above that for the restructured uh, part. So it's close to 10%, is it? Because uh, I remember it used to be 20%. 15 plus. Okay. Okay, fair enough. And, and secondly, again on the provisioning, um, so because some of these, you know, unsecured portfolios have become, um, you know, have, have grown quite a bit, like credit cards, and they tend to be um, higher credit cost businesses once they get seasoned. Do we see any upward delta on credit cost as such going into FI25, or uh, would you like to put some outlook on credit costs going into FI25? Uh, if you normalize for FI, credit costs are about 24. Is it 24? Is it 24 points, Julia? 23. Yeah. 23. Right? Uh, I said that that is uh, low. But I'm happy that that low may not dramatically alter and shift up. But yeah, you could argue that somewhere around 30 basis points is what we would push and try try to deliver in FI25. But that's uh, that's around it. Fair enough, Sham. And and, and the one last question again on the corrective action we've taken on the uh, partnership uh, is there um, on the fintech partnership is there any um, OPEX that one should expect related to that, uh, yeah, that's my last question. Yep. Uh, not significant in OPEX, right? It's only a model of where data resides, how it's accessed, who, who holds it. Uh, to that extent, we don't believe it. any cost uh, impact should be there. Okay, fair enough. Uh, thanks, Sham and team. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Kunal Shah from Citigroup. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, hi. So firstly, uh, just with respect to fee income on the general banking charges, so is it like uh, we need to add this uh, uh, 60 to 67 crores of uh, reversal to it, or uh, there was no impact in this quarter and uh, that fee income was also in Q3 itself? No, no. The reversal is from the fee income and Q4. Uh, general banking also there is a similar gap on a quarter on quarter basis of 60 odd crore so is that the impact yes okay so last time we just made the provisioning of uh, 62 maybe the other provisions were almost like 62 odd crores in q3 so last quarter we merely made the provisions out there uh, and was it booked in some other line item, maybe in OPEX or so? And this quarter we are doing it in, say, more of a fee income and reversing the provision. How how is uh, that happening? Yeah. That's because the provision was made. This quarter the provision has been released and fee income has been uh, hit by that amount. Okay, okay. So 62, 62. So uh, ideally, when we look at it in terms of the fee income, it should have been near 680, 690 odd crores. Yes, you for see, this quarter. charges for. 
three preceding quarters were in the region of about 100 yeah yeah that's what so that 60 crores needs i need to get it out there okay okay and uh, secondly in terms of the overall uh, opec so last quarter also there was some provisioning towards the wage revision this time it is towards the uh, retirement benefit uh, so we need to adjust almost like say 200 odd crores in the employee cost uh, just to make sure that the entire wage provisioning impact gets over in and that should be the normalized uh, level of uh, employee cost for full year fy24 just to be the thing 200 odd crores Yeah, that's correct. Uh, yeah, it's approximately around 200. So 162 plus there were some arrears and all which we had, and there were a lot of other uh, new uh, things which had come in with the wage agreement. So we factored all of that. Yeah. So if we have to look at it ideally, the normalized uh, opex for FY24 in terms of be it uh, either cost to assets and uh, where should we see it uh, settling? If you can just guide in terms of how it should move in uh, FY25. FY25, excluding this one-off impact, uh, you know, we should look at uh, similar levels. I would add probably another five percent more to the opex cost. Okay, okay. So five percent to the overall opex cost. Overall opex, yeah. Okay, okay. Got it. And there were no one-offs uh, during the year on uh, uh, during uh, the year on the uh, overhead side. In the overheads, uh, there was uh, no no major one house. No so major spend, one house. Like I said earlier, the spend on uh, branches, technology, all of them yeah. have been happening, which will continue as well. Yeah. So more business related without any one offs. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, and all the rest. Yeah. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Mona Kitan from Dollar Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, I think good evening. Uh, so, firstly, uh, you mentioned about this ROA expansion uh, continuation that four to five days in FY25 as well. So, uh, given that you know credit costs will ideally normalize at higher levels, and uh, there could be some headwinds to margin with you know interest rates uh, uh, maybe declining and the impact on floating rate loans. So. um what according to you will be the key levers uh, with the assumed expansion here on to rewind 2 years 1 year 3 years which is a win the credit costs are low you don't have much space left how will my roa expand you have seen roa expand uh, over the last 3 years so we always maintain a little bit a few base point here we don't have one silver bullet which will change the narrative so our new expansion by a few basis point credit cost holding well efficiency again the income growing should be the driver of this. okay and so you guided for credit cost of around 30 bit for fy25 if i got it right uh, yeah in that in that range yeah 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 you're right in that range i got it and just finally uh, Uh, there was uh, uh, on this opex growth guidance that was talked about in the previous question uh, so uh, x of the 200 crore one off what we are saying is opex could rise by about 5% year on year is that what i understood correctly yeah excluding the 162 you have to make see there are costs which are directly proportional to business growth that will continue to rise in line with business expansion but the other overheads and opex cost overall increase will be curtailed within a 5% of the q4 etc hundred got it okay thank you so much that's all for my side thank you the next question is from the line of saurav kumar from jp morgan please go ahead so just one question uh, on your current accounts normally you know you see seasonality in q4 You are flat. I mean, is there something uh, happening there? <laughs> no particular answer. Actually, I'm quite pleased it didn't uh, show any swing uh, because usually it tends to bulk up at the end of the quarter and fall off. I'm pleased that Q4 didn't see anything, and nor have we seen any fall in Q1. So it's a uh, more sustainable outcome, I would believe. Harsh or Shalini, if you want to come in. Mm-hmm. 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 Mm-
Yeah, sure, sir. Yeah, Mohammed for seven things, right? He has been increasing and focusing on current account balances, but there's no bulk up that is happening. And the current account balances average is showing steady increase. Yeah, just to add to what Harsh says, our entire kind of focus has been that on an average is what we measure ourselves on. So we don't, uh, I mean, we don't see too many month end or quarter end or year end uh, kind of spikes, you know. Okay. Got it. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Pritesh Boom from Dam Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Good evening. Uh, two questions from a side. One is on the retail gold loans. Uh, this quarter also we've not seen any material growth despite gold prices being up, uh, our LTV being stable. Uh, any any uh, strategy on that? Because this is one important uh, piece for our high yielding uh, growth strategy. Is that true? Harsh, frequently. No, it's not. 27% is what is growing. Yeah, it's sequentially increased 6%. I think that's why I'm talking about the retail gold, which is separately shown in the investor deck. Retail loan growth. Okay, retail gold. Okay. I recollect it was four five four zero to four five seven two or something like that. Yeah. So it was flattish, like a one percent odd quarter on quarter, despite gold prices being so high in the last quarter. So anything on that? So not, nothing specific over here. I'll share. I mean, specific yeah. over here, we have been tracking the entire overall portfolio. We've been monitoring the LTV. We do not encourage top ups just because the gold prices go up because it tends to hurt us when the reversal happens. So that's, that's there. So from that point of view, we've been monitoring it. Our organic growth was robust. The one which you see in retail has a mix of both, which the organic growth has shown, shown robust growth over there on the, on the retail growth side. But your question on can retail growth happen, I think there uh, is certainly an opportunity, but there is a pricing game there. Uh, people are tending to price this and take share there. So it is not a, it's not uh, as easy as it appears, but certainly yes, there is an opportunity. Uh, what I see is that the ticket sizes is falling uh, quite sharply. And it's from about 40,000 rupees to about 30, below 30 now. So just wanted to check what 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 are we thinking on that side? Yeah, well, since we are all giving you an answer, which is kind of uh, you know not very research, it's best we'll come back to you. Got it. Second, uh, sir, uh, you mentioned about the uh, partnership uh, correction uh, in terms of co-branded. Uh, is are we taking a corrective action, if any, in the other partnerships as well, lending or otherwise? Uh, apart from the co-branded cards. Uh, let me help you with this. So we have on the lending side, on the credit card side, two material co-brand partners. One is uh, one card and the other is KPR. And the others are more the deposit side into which we cross sell. On both these things, the corrective actions are happening. On the personal loan side, they are really not um, impacted by this process. So. Uh, that said, all our fintech or partnership, any partner, we are subjecting it to the same level of scrutiny to ensure that gaps, if any, are addressed. Got it. And the last question was uh, basically our retail share of deposits slightly dropping uh, from few quarters and bulk has been now at about, I think, 20%. So any gap there we want to put in terms of how much we can go to in terms of bulk deposits and retail deposits? Uh, I think I mentioned it uh, earlier when the, one of your colleagues asked us. Yes, uh, we are at probably at the top end of it. Around this number is where we would be. Uh, sir, uh, uh, given that uh, this is more likely a top and the retail uh, term deposits are quite uh, high in terms of reach, uh, where do you see our cost of funds? This quarter also we've seen 20 basis points up. Uh, so how do we see that uh, going in FI25? Ankar, do you want to come in? Yeah, sure. Yeah. See, in terms of cost of funds, uh, you know, uh, while we are seeing how the market is and the demand for deposits continues to be quite tough. Uh, while we will see the pressure on deposit pricing, and there will be some impact of that translating. What we are trying to mitigate that is uh, with 
you know, the yield side, as mentioned earlier by Sham and others, working through the mix and making sure that we are able to uh, you know, maintain the NIMS either at the current level or improve it. So we will see the cost of funds moving up marginally, uh, going ahead, at least for the next couple of quarters. Got it, sir. Thank you, and all the best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rakesh Kumar from BNK Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Thanks a lot, sir. Uh, so slightly, uh, so broader question. Uh, so one thing that so for this quarter, the calculated uh, term deposit cost has not increased. Uh, so correct me if I am wrong or if there is a flat number on the term deposit cost. For so this quarter, TD cost has gone up. I don't know how you arrived at a calculated number being flat. Last quarter, it was 7.06 cost of term deposit. That has gone up to around 7.25. Okay. So we have calculated on the based on the uh, quarterly average balances. Uh, but thanks, sir. Now, second thing, sir, uh, like if I but see... How, uh, that's what translates to the cost of funds, right? Because savings is pretty much flat. True, true. Uh, so what I was looking at is that, you know, uh, like for the last three years, uh, like, you know, whatever increase in credit yield has happened, that has largely happened with, uh, you know, the increase in credit risk rate that, you know, uh, credit risk rate density that has increased. Now, uh, with this, like, you know, and like, you know, we have around 25, 27% of the loans which are on the fixed rate basis. Uh, so, uh, and with the 170 bits, 125 increase in the cost of deposit, we have transmitted around 155 bits, you know, in the uh, credit yield. So is there any scope to further enhance the margin at this level without increasing the credit risk weight? Just the account uh, portfolio by portfolio managed. Uh, besides that, we have to look at, not we have to, we are looking at opportunities to find how we can hedge some of our portfolios to ensure that we are in a falling rate environment, reasonably well protected. We believe we are getting to a good success on that count by managing it through a multiple levers as opposed to just one that may be very visible. So it has to be seen as uh, we slice the book, the entire 200,000 crores into multiple buckets, find opportunities for each of them, and all of them are in play. Uh, so net net sir margin, how do you see that you know giving these numbers like for the last three years, or maybe maybe after May 22 when the you know interest rate cycle rise has started. So if we see since then now, how do we see the you know the margin panning out? I thought I mentioned at the earlier part of the call. We think that 320 should in chapter about two to three basis points is financially. Understood, sir. Understood. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of uh, Jay Mundra from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Good evening, sir, and uh, thanks for the opportunity. I have two questions. Um, you know, first, uh, I think uh, it was asked a little bit earlier on yield. So, apart from the loan mix change uh, and maybe the uh, you know, the usual MCLR pricing, is there anything else which could help uh, on the yield side? Maybe if there are few loans which are hybrid or maybe, you know, uh, which may convert from fixed to floating, is there is there such uh, meaningful quantum of such loans? Venkat, you want to go? Venkat, I'll ask you I thought I answered the earlier part. That's why I think one of you, maybe I missed saying something. I think pretty much uh, summarizes what uh, we plan to do, uh, Jay, and uh, there isn't any other you know, silver bullet which we have. It's all about looking at portfolio, mix change, pushing through, you know, or cutting the tail on low yielding. So a combination of all this only will help us ensure that we maintain the news. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
I'll just add a few points here. What we are looking at, what we've been articulating, is increasing the focus on the high businesses, which we have spoken about. But even within each business vertical, the focus is shifting more towards one which will give us a higher risk. For example, wholesale banking, you clearly see a shift from the share of commercial banking increasing vis a corporate banking. Similarly, in commercial vehicle, you see a shift more as increasing share towards used commercial vehicles. That in uh, corporate banking, we are looking at increasing the share of supply chain businesses. In corporate banking, again, we are looking at weeding out those very finely priced assets with their no reciprocity. So, this is a combination of these things which will help us in terms of pushing up the business in general, apart from focusing on the high yield businesses. So, just to add to that again, as uh, Harshan Mankar has alluded on the retail side also, uh, if you look at kind of home loans and Slice it into parts like just regular home loans and loans against properties. We've, we've expanded our presence in the loan against property market, where the margins tend to be a little better. Within the auto loan segment, we're gradually increasing our uh, you know entry into the used car segment. Within business banking, for example, we're granularizing our portfolio because at the lower end you can get slightly better pricing. So there's no silver bullet for it, as I think we've all. I think many many actions taken and you see the kind of um, you know the improvements on the yield coming out of all these multitude of actions right and if you can uh, highlight the loan mix by benchmark i mean by nclr eblr uh, fixed rate uh, you have that handy it's mentioned it's uh 51 percent is uh EDLR. It's fixed. Did you do? Yeah. Uh, 51 point something and 27 is fixed. And uh, 11 percent is MCLR. Yeah. Yeah. The rest of them is forex links, staff loans, and uh, base rates. Yeah. So, uh, Sean, I think the question is on your deposit, right? So, if I see that NR deposit has grown only by 8 percent, whereas the overall Domestic deposit has gone up slightly higher, and the overall deposit growth is 18 um, percent. I, I remember that you know uh, that there was not too much difference on the NRTD and domestic TD two quarters back. I wanted to check: uh, is there any significant difference between you know blended NRTD and domestic TD? And you know uh, what, what is the reason that NR deposit is growing at a little bit slower pace or much slower pace? Yeah, deposit rates are the same across uh, whether it's domestic or NR. I think uh, we've been mentioning for a few calls now. Uh, Post-COVID, the nature of how NR remittances and behavior of remittances converting into deposit has material change. Remittances have gone up and our share has kept pace, but the remittances are not translating to deposit. Either, not either, our hypothesis has followed. It's uh, getting, it's being used for uh, paying off debt. That's why credit quality is improving substantially, even in Kerala. Uh, one, setting up new businesses, because many of them are probably returning and setting up some shop here. Uh, and for consumption, like family wedding, marriage, school, college, whatever. Right? And the last is uh, the non Middle East Kerala remittances uh, probably have not move much and it's probably getting into FCNR and we are not a big FCNR player because the rates don't necessarily work in favor. Rupee deposits coming in, uh, rupee remittances coming in are continuing to be vibrant. We are seeing a larger share of it, but unfortunately they are not translating it to deposit directly. Indirectly it will because it creates commercial activity and it comes back as deposit. Directly it doesn't go into deposit. Which is why so five years back as we started dialing up our outside of this norm business and those are tracking quite well. Understood. That is helpful. Uh, sorry, I have two more questions. One is uh, OPEX. I think earlier you mentioned that, you know, X of this 200 crores of staff cost, which is uh, one off, the growth should be 5% only. But then you sort of qualified that by saying that the usual business as usual costs will still be there. Right. So if you can uh, help us understand what, how should one look at the OPEX growth 
for maybe uh, for maybe one two years. That will be helpful. Sir, I didn't get the last part of the question. What did you say? Uh, how should we look at our OPEX uh, increase in the year ahead, year ahead? Two years, uh, again, uh, it's, it's dependent on our strategy on the investments in branches. That is one main part. For FY25, uh, the current outlook is we will probably look at, like Sham said, another 100 branches to be added. The technology, IT spends as a percentage of OPEX, they are now close to around 6.7%. And that's an area where we'll continue to invest. And uh, we would like that to be closer to around 8% of OPEX. So in the next FY25 and uh, even FY26 early part, the current outlook is investments in these two will continue at pace at the same rate at which we have been doing. On staff costs, if you exclude the one-off, like I said, there will be, uh, I would put another 5% increase on a year-on-year -year basis. And the other fixed cost would be around cap that match 5% increase. But the variable cost related to businesses would continue to be in line with business growth. As long as it's you know, positive jobs, we'll continue to invest those. So overall cost, the controllable cost, staff cost, uh, would be about 5% more than the current Q4 exit run rate. Sure. And last question, uh, sir, if you could highlight, is there any impact on the capital because of the new investment guidelines which were uh, which which were implemented with the set from April 1st um, uh, regarding SPM and USS uh, reclassification? Thank you. No, nothing at all. Nothing. No. No accretion, no impact, right? I mean, nothing might be. Nothing. So, thank you, and all the best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Saket Kapoor from Kapoor and Co. Please go ahead. Yeah, Namaskar, uh, team, and thank you for the opportunity. Uh, firstly, about the treasury uh, part uh, under the segment revenue. Uh, so, what explains uh, the dip in the profitability? If you could give uh, some understanding on the thing. Yeah, last quarter we had the FedFina listing gain. So that is not repeated in this quarter. That's the main difference. Okay. And sir, uh, in, in, in your opening remark and also during the call, sir, uh, Shanti, you mentioned about uh, we are looking for a 25% growth in the NII, the net interest income uh, for FY25, 24, 25. Not NII, fee income. Income. Yeah. Okay, and what should be the NII trajectory likely? The growth in the. This year we grew 15, a credit grew 20. We would like to be better on both counts. Um, but, you know, we just have to work through this cost of funds uh, challenge. But, yeah, in that zone. Okay, we, we, we are very likely to, uh, to, to remain in this trajectory, what we have performed for this financial year. Uh, improves likely. You will improve slightly. So on the cost to income ratio, uh, where should we stabilize? This quarter was, I think, for an aberration. Now, this quarter is an aberration. We were looking to be, uh, last year was 49 and change. We were looking to be in that 49 or better. Uh, but now these costs have come and uh, impacted us. So I think FY25 should be back to about 50 odd percent and then improving from there. Okay. And two small points. Firstly, on the dividend payout part, sir. Uh, uh, I think so we have done the fundraising exercise also earlier. So I think so we are very well capitalized. Uh, uh, what what have what have been the factors on on which we have decided the payout to be lower than ten percent of the EPS for this financial year, sir? And then one closing remark from Shanti. So we are looking to preserve capital as we grow. We think uh, we should be able to strike a sort of a sensible balance between. Uh, plow back and also reward shareholders. So the board in its wisdom has taken the decision to recommend a 60% dividend second dividend. Because as, as you mentioned, rewarding your investors and shareholders, uh, if, if you take the trajectory of the market cap change uh, over the period, I think so it has been subdued in comparison to the other uh, listed banking space. 
so uh, that was a very small and uh, that was a very brief understanding on uh, how how well uh, when you see the the market uh, cap or the uh, uh, the type the the time the type of uh, net to book uh, book value that should uh, the stock trade going ahead these are uh, few few of the parameters which investors uh, also look in terms of the payout ratios also and lastly sir uh, sham sir uh, your term uh, come to uh, end as you alluded earlier also five months and we have seen that in many of uh, the banks uh, the uh, the people uh, the the personnel have tried uh, their hand at other small banks so can we look forward for your role uh, in some other uh, small banking entities who are also scouting for experienced uh, people like you or veterans like you and uh, we can see you in other uh, in, uh, being in other entity or all together or uh, is it curtain down for your career in the terms of being the uh, md what's the uh, thought process if you would like to share and, and any message to us <laughs> thank you kapoor sir we'll talk on september 24th 2024 till that time i will the seat and i'm enjoying the seat correct yeah Okay, sir. Uh, thank you. Uh, and uh, for shareholder value creation idea, sir, I think so. Uh, please uh, dwell uh, on the metrics. I, I think so. Our banking, our bank uh, is lacking on that behalf, on on that count. That's our feedback. Thank, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Shavik, uh, we are just left with a couple of minutes. Uh, any yes, sir. I think one more question, and then we can wrap it up. Sure. So the next question is from the line of. MB Mahesh from Kotak Securities please go ahead hey hi uh, and congratulations on good result just one question uh, just a comment I, if i missed it on the non staff expenses it was up from 8 to 50 crores to 9 to 50 crores i don't know if you made a comment on it that's it from us we didn't comment on it but i think when it alluded to the overall investment in technology and uh, branch expansion as primary drivers of expansion of course But Sam, is that that high? Because during so these are not branches. Mahesh, typically in Q4, we normally see an uptick in the other opex. So it's in line with what we have seen. It will normalize in the first two quarters and then again pick up. Because there were some one-offs which not one-offs, some IT spends which normally happen whether it's in EULA renewal or some infrastructure purchase which gets charged off. That usually happens. It's the timing of the renewal as well which happens. So it's Q4 is usually the quarter where you see a higher IT spend. Okay. Okay. Perfect. That. That. And thanks. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we would take that as the last question for today. I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Sawik Roy for closing comments. Thanks, Agar, and uh, thanks everyone for taking time and joining us on the call today. Uh, I hope we have been able to uh, address all your questions, if not most. And uh, if any questions uh, remain unanswered, please feel free to reach out to our IR team. We'd be more than happy to, you know, uh, take those questions on a one-on-one -on -one basis and offer further clarification. Uh, going ahead, we'll definitely continue to, you know, drive uh, risk-calibrated, profitable growth, and uh, our focus will definitely remain on. market share groups as uh, shall we take one second uh, good evening everybody thank you i just wanted to point out that our uh, uh, stalwart in the bank ashutosh kajuria after almost 13 years uh, in various capacities is uh, retiring as a business close this evening he'll be associated with the bank in some advisory role but his formal terms uh, end as of today so join me in congratulating and thanking ashutosh for an exemplar uh, support and performance in the bank Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ashutosh sir. Thank you for all these many years of amazing service to the bank and to everybody. Thank you so much. And uh, uh, with that, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we we'll sign off for today. I also, I, I also wanted to add one more thing. Sure, our sir. Senior, our senior colleague who had HR here is moving to another bank as an MD, and it's a proud moment for Federal Bank. So I have to compliment our colleague Ajit Kumar for that. Yes, sir. So uh, thanks, Ajit sir as well. Ajit sir, if you're on the call, uh, thank you. Thanks again, sir. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Thank you. All. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 And see you all after even a probably a better next quarter. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of the Federal Bank Limited, that concludes this conference.
Thank you for joining us. You may now disconnect your lines.